Good day everyone, welcome to another Back to Basics video. In this one we're going to be talking about how to take voltage readings from a um, guitar pedal. This can be used for any circuit, but we're talking specifically about guitar pedals here. Um, it's a question that comes up quite a bit, and I have spoken about this before, but I'll go over it again in this one just so that we've got a video that covers the topic specifically. Um, and it's a question that comes up quite a bit because usually it comes up when you're stuck with a, with a build, um, and you're asking someone for help and they say, look, I need voltage readings. Can you take some readings for me? Um, and then they can look at the schematic and see approximately what voltages you should be getting for particular parts of the circuit. So let's take a look at one. I've got it on the desk. I'll explain a little bit more. Okay, so first you're going to need a multimeter. Obviously, you can't do this without one. Um, so first thing you want to do is um, just get an alligator clip. If you've got one handy, it's easier. Clip it onto your negative. And then clip it onto ground negative of your circuit. Um, and in this case, with a guitar pedal, you might know, um, or you might not, that the enclosure is ground. Um, but I find that I don't often get a good um, connection if I try and connect it to, to ground, like in there. Um, so I usually disconnect it to um, the the shield of the jack, which is which will which is connected to this thread right on the jack there and that's connected to the actual enclosure so that's ground so just connect it make sure you pick the right one that's the tip you don't want to connect it to the tip you want to connect it to the shield of either of those jacks they're both connected to ground um, so you've got that connected to ground and then you just basically you to put your multimeter on um, volts um, don't put it on volts with it see that one with the little squiggly line there that's AC just basically means AC just basically means it's a voltage that varies. Um, we don't we don't generally use that for um, guitar pedals. We want um, DC, um, which is the one above. It has the line with the with the little dashes underneath. So that's the one that you want. And you're going to need power. You obviously have to power the circuit. So I'll just plug that in at the back there. Whoops. And now we basically just go around on the board and check for the voltages. I'll just zoom in for that. Hope, try and get them both on the screen so you can see what's happening. On the multimeter as well. Okay, now usually when people ask for voltages, they usually only want the transistor and the IC voltages. They don't want every single voltage, they want all these resistors. But lucky for us, because it would take a long time, um, and you'd also have to get access to the bottom of the board to get the capacitor voltages as well. But generally, they usually only want um, resistors and um, and and um, capacitor. Uh, they don't they don't want the resistor and capacitors. They only want the the IC and the transistors. Um, so when you're, um, when you're measuring the voltage, you go around with the IC pin numbers. You go, the little dot there is one, and you go one, two, three, down like that, one, two, three, four, and then you go across to five and back up to eight. So that's how you read the, um, the pin numbers, right? It doesn't go one, two, three, four, down, and then up five, six, seven, eight. It doesn't go like that. It goes around in sort of like an anti-clockwise um, uh, direction like that like a U. So you go down on the right side, across, and then up. Just want to make that nice and clear, because if you do it the other way around, um, your, your voltages will just be all over the place, and you'll think you have a problem, but you don't. Well, you might think you have a problem, but you don't. With the transistors, um, you've got um, emitter, collector, and base. In this one, it's, um, or sorry, if you're dealing with a, a BJT, I don't want to get into too much um, detail about that, but generally, most people can work it out, even if you don't put um, which pin is which, but to find out, you have to look up the data sheet of the transistor. It sounds very difficult, but it's not. Um, just look up the data sheet of the transistor. It's usually on the first page, it'll tell you which pin is which, and then you can write down, like for instance, if it's a meter, like that one's a meter, you can write down what the actual voltage of the, um, of the, of the pin is, and so there won't be any mistake. So you've got to measure the transistors and the ICs. So the emitter is connected to ground in this case, that's why it's coming up with zero, because ground is zero, it's basically the same as me putting it on the enclosure like that, it's going to come up with zero as well. So, so, so um, just to get your head around that, that, that emitter has a direct connection, that pin of that transistor, the emitter, with that little tab on it, is connected directly to the enclosure. It's basically like if you imagine a wire running across and then touching the enclosure, it's the same thing. Um, so that's why that's coming up with zero because ground is all, is is well ground is usually always zero. Um, so 
just go around and measure the IC. So, so for instance, that one, pin number eight of this particular um, transistor, which is a charge pump, is 9.17 volts. Um, and if we have a look at the actual supply voltage, you'll probably find it's the same as the supply voltage, if I can get that on there. Which it is, 9.17. Uh, um, so I know, I, I know how this IC works, that's why I know that that's going to be the supply voltage. You might not, but if you write, see that this is the thing, if you write those, if you record all those uh, voltages, write them down and send them to someone who, who knows a bit about electronics, they'll be able to work out whether you've got a problem. If you put, if, if you measure that and it comes up with 5 volts or 2 volts, um, they'll know something's wrong because it's supposed to be the same as the supply voltage. Um, so that's just one example, a couple of examples of how you can read voltages to work out whether things are working correctly or not. It's the same with the emitter there. If that came up with a, with a high voltage, you'd know something was wrong. Um, it's just, um, it's, it's why, why measuring these things is, um, is handy to do to fault diagnose. So if you're working on a on an effect that's outside the enclosure, just connect the, the negative to the negative um, the negative cable uh, ne negative wire that comes off the board. Just clip it on um, like you normally do. You just got to connect that to ground. It doesn't matter whether it's inside an enclosure or an effect that's loose. So that's it. Super simple. It's not that hard to do, um, and it will help somebody help you. So it's definitely worthwhile being patient, going around and getting the right voltages, making sure that you're writing down the right voltages. If you send somebody voltages and you haven't recorded them properly, it's just gonna, it's just gonna make things even harder to try and solve. Um, so just spend a bit of time, patiently go around for the transistors, write down which leg that you're, that you're, um, that you're measuring. Um, and then, like I said, somebody can, I mean, they're spending, the, the, when people fault diagnose things for you, you know, they don't owe you anything, they're, they're, just, they're just trying to help you because they're nice. So, do the right thing, let them, help them help you, I guess you could say. And if you do have a broken pedal, I hope you get it working, and thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe for more do-it-yourself guitar pedal related videos. Thanks for watching.